Welcome back learners uh, to this course Ecological Economics of the uh, program Postgres Diploma in Sustainable Design. I hope we are enjoying uh, that learning the basic principle of ecological economics in the last few sessions. You know, in the last session, especially in the last session, we have looked into how the concept of ecological economics was developed by a different economists. So today in, uh, in this session, the major uh, topic is on environment and economic interlinkages. Here we are trying to uh, describe the linkages between economy and environment and how it has or their interdependence. And imputation has arrived you know, today to develop models to integrate that human activities with environment and systems, right? From questions about economy, the environment, and sustainable development, normally asked by government, industry, and the public. The answers of these questions requires new tools of analysis that we call model. So a model of environment economic linkages can be taken as a tool useful for policy research and development focus on sustainability. Here, today in this session, we are going to discuss on one of the possible framework for describing economy environment linkages. The underlying concept uh, for the development of an environment economic model is the recognition that all economic activities require materials energy drawn directly and indirectly from the environment and that ultimately this material energy are returned to the environment as waste products. So economy consists of the activities commonly referred to as production, distribution and consumption undertaken by humans. You know, not only is the economy a subsystem of the ecosphere, it is also a subsystem of the larger set of activities that make up a social life. So it is within this, uh, this dependent relationship, that is what we call uh, of the economy operating within the environment, that the concept of sustainable development arises. That is the requirement that current practice should not diminish the possibility of maintaining or improving the living standard in the future is well examined. So, such so a material or energy balance perspective of the economy differs markedly from the more conventional view of the economy, right? Which in a conventional economy, major focus is on the circular flow of income, the actions of commodities in the market. And uh, those, I mean, uh, you know, perspective of conventional economy ignores the linkages to the environment. What is that? That is the, you know, that uh, their concept is, uh, that conventional view economic concept is that economy is a closed circuit model with households supplying the factors of production. What is that production? Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship to farms that produce the output and distribute income to households. So they detach from the environment, right? So the application of uh, this approach has been undertaken in various countries and region. This approach means economy and uh, that, uh, that material energy balance perspective, right? So in this context, you know, sustainable development requires that economies operate within limits that nature poses. So the market system continues to function, but it must be obliged to do so with constraints imposed by government to avoid the uncertain consequences that nature will ultimately impose. So if we look into a framework for environment economic model, if you look at from a modeling perspective, you know, the concept of limits to human activities can be this limits to economic and human activities that should be introduced through a set of constraints expressed mathematically. Here also some certain problems are there. For example, uh, first the selection of the variable that should be constrained to capture the meaning of sustainable development. The measuring of such variables and uh, you know the process to establish appropriate constraint values. So, the, the, the main to challenge is to specify a set of constraints that are comprehensive and measurable without becoming 
to detail, right? So you will see here the conceptual framework of the environment economic land cases model in this figure. The economy, you know, which consists of the provincial input or output macro system, final demand and labor, capital and technology, they are shown in three different bo boxes on the left side, right? The economy uses the environment for inputs to produce and is a receptacle for its waste. In addition, you know, here the quality and quantity of the resource available to the economy is affected by wastes placed in the environment. Thus, you know, the environment supports the economy by supplying resources and accepting, again accepting the waste. Two functions which themselves are interrelated. So, especially uh, this aggregated input output model is uh, or includes linkage like here you will see A, B, C and D and can deal with existence demand for capital equipment that is linking. So the challenge in the development of, of an environment economy model is to incorporate the other linkages into the into this basic framework. So here in this an environment economy model this concept from the framework what we discuss uh, by developing another and extended conventional input output framework. So the modeling efforts focus on the definition and mathematical formulation of linkage E here to map capital expenditure indigenous including final demand sector as a production F and a Z to map explicit the flows to and from the natural demand. So an adjustment to conventional input output model was also met to identify scope and level of activities arising from environmental industries in the economy, illuminating the prominent role of this sector in providing waste management services and pollution control products and process. So here the linkages I, I, Z and the K, they were not included in the model framework in the beginning. Since the disaggregated site specific data required to include these linkages are currently not available here. So the exclusion of these linkages resulted in a comparative static model or modeling system. So the resulting model promised different choices of final demand, technological processes and regional location. So the model is caused by incorporating consumption and import demand equation that relates this variable to disposable income in the case of consumption and total income in the case of imports. So the model allows for different growth rates that has to be stipulated to scale the different components of exogenous final demand categories. It is also possible to investigate the economic impact of level and compositional changes in the economy. You know, since environmental impacts are related to uh, by fixed technological coefficients to the various levels of output and employment, economic environmental impacts are determined simultaneously. So in addition, all the environmental coefficient in the model can be adjusted or updated. So the database provides default values. So with improvement in knowledge base, both economic and environmental database that can be revised. And this modeling flexibility is very important as changes in policy are likely to increase the efficiency of the economic environment and processes. For example, uh, lower emission per unit of output. So by changing the geographical uh, resolution of the databases, then the model can also can uh, also be adjusted to operate on the basis of water set instead of you know jurisdictional bounds. We as well do as uh, when we do ecological modeling. So, uh, in that case, uh, it requires that all the data are geographically referenced at a suitable level of spatial resolution. When we look into the economic impact of macroeconomics, you know, it that trends impact of uh, the economic impact on macroeconomic is reported in terms of number of indicators like you know scales shipment of products and services, gross income, taxes by type of different tax, the level of government collecting tax, employment in total by major industrial group like 25 or so. So environmental impacts are presented in terms of number of indicators which include 
soaps, knocks, and uh, volatile organic compounds. Water consumption in discharge, energy by five types of fills in physical and energy unit, crude oil, hydro, natural gas, coal gas, and so on, and solid waste by 19 types. In this uh, case, uh, which is proposed by the author of this unit. So these impacts are shown by industrial activity and it can be presented spatially. So these impacts are sensitive to the technological choice made by society. Traditionally, input-output analysis relies on fixed technological coefficients and constant return to the scale. However, in the case of paper production like one of the industry, an alternate recycling technology is available, so the model allows for technological choice. Right? It is based on the author's review. Right? And how we have to apply then application of this particular model? Here, uh, in for today's uh, sake of discussion, I will look into the study material. In that study material, the author proposed a case study to assist the applicability of this uh, model, uh, environment economy uh, linkages model, environment economy model. Uh, in the city, uh, province uh, which was uh, uh, for the province of Ontario, Canada. The purpose of uh, the key study which is uh, the author uh, that uh, presented theoretically uh, was to assess the model's ability to identify and assess the implication of different economy environment policy scenarios. As a case study, a set of hypothetical policy alternatives are developed affecting Ontario's economy and environment. These scenarios are not prediction or forecast. They are a systematic analysis of a set of assumptions whose consequences are quantified using the model. None of the scenarios should be uh, considered to represent an actual case or likely future. So, uh, base case scenario was developed to derive the employment, gross provincial, income, taxes and environmental impacts in 1990 using the actual finance demand data like that is investment in machinery and construction, government expenditure and all export. So all of the other scenarios are constructed from the base case scenario of 1990. Right? In the scenario 1, the historical growth rate. The historical growth rate of sectoral output in Ontario between 1981 to 89 were used as the basis for projecting output between 89 to 1990. So in other words, this scenario examines the implication of the economy continuing to grow between 1989-1990 and 1990. At the same time, rates of growth as those observed between 1981 and 89. And scenario 2, that is export-led growth. So in this scenario, the base case is added with 5% growth in export. All other exogenous variables remain unchanged from their base case values. This scenario simulates a result of increased free trade and declining value of Canadian dollar against the US dollar. It is also interesting as it goes of the impact of the economy and environment of a lopsided recovery with exports playing the major propulsive force in the economy. Scenario 3. Substitution of plastic for steel. The economy continued to experience shifts in the use of inputs prompted by economic and environmental consideration. So, plastic is increasingly replacing steel and aluminum in the making of containers. In this scenario, an attempt was made to model the dynamic consequences on economy and environment on aggressive plan to substitute plastic for steel. The another scenario, scenario 4. The contaminant reduction in the health and pep, uh, in the palm paper industry. The discharge of contaminant in industry specific. The program uh, to reduce conventional, non conventional metal contam contaminant in both capital expenditure and uh, operating expenses. So, the magnitude and the effectiveness of this program are also industry specific. So, in this scenario, you know what uh, expanding on equipments. And other environmental products and services stimulated are uh, simulated to effect a reduction in ammonia discharge, total phosphorus, total suspended solid from pulp and the pepper mills. So, in scenario 5, contaminant reduction in metal mining. 
It is same as what uh, we explain uh, this uh, scenario for. Except spending on equipment, other environment product and service aid, that is simulated to effect a reduction in TSS, total cyanide, copper, lead, and zinc discharge from metal mining operation. So, the reason provide an initial appreciation of the type of outputs available from the model. The environmental results presented are more varied and detailed and include water intake and discharge, emission by three types, energy by five different rules and different files, solid waste by 19 different types and waste water contaminant by nine contaminants. The model also dif uh, differentiate out outputs uh, by industry and the region means and countryside. So, the environment economy framework and model described which we discussed today is an attempt to integrate environment within a macroeconomic framework. So, the fundamental strength of the model is its ability to establish quantitative links between economic activity and the environment within a general framework. So, that includes both conventional economic impacts and the impacts of Susan part of economic activity on the environment, indicating the sustainability of the activity. Equally important to the discussion of sustainable development is the ability of this model to project likelihood uh, economic environmental impacts of a given configuration of the economy into the future. Now, since final demand components 1990 derived, uh, that drive the model developed here, it is possible to go the sensitivity of economic to environmental constraint or the environmental impacts of different economic performance levels. Moreover, if you look into the model's flexibility, it allows change to be met to this final demand components, as well as changes to the environmental coefficients in stock of natural resources that is embodied in the model. So, this model permits the testing of the sensitivity of the system to different economic or regulatory schemes that aims at changing the pattern of environmental activities. So, if I summarize what we discussed today is uh, to understand the linkages between economy and environment and that are well explained through a model called environment economy linkages uh, model. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you in the next week.